Hello everyone, my name is Joy Ratnayaka and welcome you to Azure Architecture Center step-by-step -step video series. Today we are going to go through the Azure Architecture Center and explore what are the different architecture patterns available for us to use. This video series is primarily targeted for those who work as Azure Solution Architects who want to be an Azure Solution Architect in the future. You can access Azure Architecture Center using this URL and as you can see it's an ocean of information for architects to follow when they are designing the solution architecture for their projects. It's a set of best practices and patterns for building applications on Azure using all the different Azure workloads or services. So I highly encourage you to come here, use these different reference architecture patterns or best practices when you are designing the solution architecture for your next project. As you can see here, uh, there are number of different architecture patterns or reference architectures listed under different technology areas. There are some popular articles as well. And if you are looking for architecture pattern or a reference architecture around AI and machine learning, here is the place to get started. And if you are looking for something around analytics, then this is the place to get started. And if you are looking for a solution around enterprise integration, then you have some reference architectures over here. And if you are looking for something around identity or serverless or networking or maybe microservices or maybe around web apps, Depending on the area, you have number of reference architectures documented in this website. To start with, today we will take one of the basic but commonly used reference architecture and try to understand it in detail. And I have picked the basic web application reference architecture to start with so we can explore all the basic building blocks and get familiar with how to design a solution using different Azure services. So let's go to basic web application reference architecture and this reference architecture shows proven practices for a web application that uses Azure App Service and Azure SQL database. So as you can see here, this diagram shows many Azure services such as Active Directory, DNS, Key Vault, and Log Analytics, Azure Monitor. However, in a, at a minimum le level, you will need only Azure App Service and Azure, Azure SQL Database in order to deploy your web application. But Azure Key Vault, Log Analytics, Azure Monitor, Azure DNS, are some of the other Azure components or services that you can bring into the table so that you can implement some security, observability type of nice to have features on your solution. So as a solution architect, you should know where to leverage components like Azure Key Vault and how to provide a better security over your secrets, passwords and when to use Azure Monitor and Log Analytics and provide a better observability so you can troubleshoot your application in an event uh, such as a database failure or a, a front-end failure and also when to use Azure Active Directory to provide some additional authentication and authorization capabilities. So let's go through one by one We'll start with the basic uh, bare minimum components and then we'll explore the other additional capabilities listed over here. So I'll start with Azure Resource Group. So Azure Resource Group is the logical container where you can store all the metadata around your resources. So this is purely for the purpose of managing your resources and this will help you to provide a different resource quotas, resource logs and billing plans and additional role-based access control policies 
So Azure Resource Group is nothing but a way of controlling and managing your resources uh, uh, using a logical uh, boundary or logical container. So let me go to Azure portal and uh, I have logged into my Azure trial account and let me go to uh, a resource groups section here. So as you can see, I have already created a resource group called basic web app and I have already deployed my web application into this, uh, or, or this resource group. Uh, in fact, I have created all the uh, artifacts related to my web application as part of this resource group. So in order to create a resource group, it's very easy. You have to click create and then you can provide a name for the resource group and pick the right region for the resource group uh, and some additional text if needed and you can create the resource group. So once you create the resource group, you can start creating all the other different artifacts such as SQL databases and uh, uh, app services uh, and key vault uh, and all the other components uh, one by one and you can start configuring it. So let's uh, uh, look at uh, some of the uh, components that I have already created. So let me go to uh, basic web app resource group and as you can see here i have created an app service and an app service plan uh, so that's related to the front end portion of your application so let's start with this front end portion so app service is nothing but uh, in, in other words app service web app is nothing but a way of deploying your web application into azure in order to deploy your web application and in order to create an app service web app you need to create app service plan in first place so let me quickly go through the app service plan that i have created so i have created a new app service plan called marketing web plan and this will basically uh, uh, allows me to configure the different uh, billing plans and what are the uh, capabilities around this uh, uh, services that you are going to host in this uh, uh, app, uh, app, service, uh, app service plan. So let me also quickly show you how to create app service. So you can say click a resource and app service plan as you can see over here. And when you say app service plan and create, you can pick a resource group from the existing resource group list or you can create a new one and then you need to provide a name for the app service and also the underlying operating system that you're going to utilize for deploying your application so i have selected windows for my app service and pick the region where you're going to deploy this app service and over here you can configure the SKU and size so this is nothing but the pricing tier so depending on this selection uh, we will be leveraging a lot of additional features uh, as you can see here app service plan pricing tier determines the location features and cost related to uh, or associated with your app so let me quickly go through this so if you say change size there are different app service uh, uh, plans or pricing tiers so if you are looking for dev test use cases then you have three options over here listed and also there are some additional options as well and it's nothing but a shared infrastructure as you can see right there will be a lot of other app services deployed on the same underlying infrastructure but if your use case is a production one then you have some other uh, pricing tiers where you can also get a dedicated uh, infrastructure where you can uh, always deploy your app service on a dedicated uh, infrastructure and also we have another option called isolated uh, depending on your use case so let me um, uh, uh, pick the default so that's one I ha that's the one I have picked for my uh, uh, app service plan and you can also provide some tags uh, for easy identification and then you can create the app service plan. So app service plan is basically a way of 
defining the underlying uh, infrastructure related uh, settings uh, for your uh, app service uh, so as the next step once you create the app service plan the next step is to create the app service uh, since we are developing a web application and deploying it as a web application you will be creating an app service web app let me also show you the one I have created let me go to basic web app resource group there you can see I have created an app service called marketing web so this is the existing web uh, application I have created uh, I have already um, created so I can browse this website so I get to browse this sample website uh, right after the creation it automatically deploy this uh, default uh, website right and it can be accessible from anywhere in the world using the public internet right so the steps to create a, a web uh, app is very straightforward you can click create resource so here I have already used so it will show me uh, under popular services web app otherwise you can search for it so let's say web app and then you can pick the resource group where you want to store this uh, store the metadata related to this uh, resource and provide a name and whatever you provide here will be the prefix for this dot azure website dot net uh, uh, URL so it should be a globally unique uh, uh, URL and then you can also uh, uh, pick the publishing option whether you want to publish code whether you want to uh, deploy a docker container or you want to deploy a static web app so let me go to code option and then select the runtime stack so there are a bunch of runtime options available dot net and different dot net versions java different java versions node php python and ruby so these are the listed these are the list of um, uh, runtime uh, options available at the moment so i can pick ja uh, uh, sorry dot net and uh, uh, then it automatically pick the windows as the operating system you can change the region and also uh, you can uh, uh, basically you need to select the resource group and once you select the resource group it can automatically uh, select a, a, a app service plan or you can create a new app service plan uh, depending on your uh, resource group settings so currently uh, I have the basic app I already created so it automatically create one called ASP basic web app but you can always create a new app service from here and then you can also configure some other deployment settings you can enable github actions and you can also enable uh, network uh, uh, injection uh, uh, related settings and also monitoring settings so by default it is off so you can enable it then it will start gathering all the re related information uh, and store it in a different uh, uh, a storage account and then provide some additional tags and then you can create right so once you create your app service um, it will automatically uh, deploy a sample website for you as you can see here right it's readily available and one other thing that I can also leverage as per this resource as per this reference architecture is the deployment slot so this deployment slot is a very nice capability feature provided by Azure uh, so rather than having to maintain different uh, environments uh, for dev test production you can actually uh, mimic the same concept using deployment slots uh, available in the uh, app service plans or web app service uh, uh, services so basically what you can do here is uh, you can go to the de deployment slots and I have already created 
dev QA and staging deployment slots so you will get the production deployment slot select automatically that's the default one but you can create additional deployment slots depending on your need for example I have created three additional de uh, uh, deployment slots uh, so that I can go through the process of deploying to dev first and then moving to QA and then moving into production uh, the staging and finally moving into the production so when you're creating a deployment slot you can give a name and then you can also pick to clone settings from any of the existing uh, deployment slot so basically um, once you create a deployment slot uh, you can uh, let me close and you can uh, let's say pick the QA and then you will see the overview of that particular deployment slot uh, and there you will see that the URL is marketing web dash QA and Azure websites.net so let's open that up as well and you will see it's the same website right hosted in another uh, uh, URL so let's um, also explore a bit about this uh, concept uh, let me open this up in a new browser so as you can see here uh, when you deploy a web app on uh, Azure Web Service you can use a separate deployment slot instead of the default production slot when you are running it in the standard premium or isolated app service plan so these are live apps with their own host names right so these are the uh, benefits of using deployment slot you can always validate app changes in a staging deployment and then move it to the production and also in case if you uh, face some issues with one of your latest deployments you can always go back to the last known good site back so you can basically move back to the previous state where you had uh, before uh, until you figure it out the issues in your data streams or data deployment uh, and as you can see um, uh, you can easily swap between different environments and these are the settings uh, get swapped automatically when you sw uh, swap from one deployment slot to another uh, and these are the settings doesn't get impacted uh, when you are swapping from one deployment slot to another deployment slot okay so i have uh, created my uh, web uh, app service and also uh, it, it is the same uh, process that you can actually create a, a sql uh, a service as well for example you can uh, go to create a resource and then you can say uh, sql you can create Azure SQL uh, you can say create and then you can uh, provide uh, the option that you want to go with whether it's a SQL database or it's a manage SQL instance or it's a SQL virtual machine so we always recommend to go with SQL databases option it's best for modern cloud applications unless otherwise you are migrating from your on-premise SQL to cloud then it could be one of these two options uh, so you can create uh, your SQL database instance and then when you want to connect your app service or the front end with your backend web uh, backend database uh, things such as connection string username password uh, all the details can be stored in this Azure Key Vault service so that's where the Azure Key Vault comes into the picture rather than coding or storing the con uh, configuration or connection string uh, configuration information uh, inside the uh, uh, app service we can always store them in the Azure Key Vault and use the Azure Key Vault to help you in terms of validating the request or validating the user request going into the 
uh, database and in order to capture your uh, uh, authentication uh, uh, details uh, either you can go with form based authentication or AD uh, authentication uh, so if you're going with an AD authentication then you can always talk to an Azure Active Directory you can integrate with Azure Active Directory if not you can go with the form based authentication where you can provision your own uh, database for storing uh, users uh, and, and roles so the Azure DNS will help you uh, in order to provide a, uh, a meaningful uh, URL for example if you want to provide uh, mycoop.com or mycoopweb.com right then you can always map this URL uh, with Azure uh, DNS entry so that you can leverage Azure DNS service to get a uh, meaningful uh, user-friendly uh, URLs for your website and let me also show you um, uh, so I, I do have a, a sample uh, ASP.NET Core web application created and I actually created uh, 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 this sample uh, web application using one of the existing templates and changed the uh, title uh, and the description and I have actually uh, deployed this to the uh, development deployment slot of my website uh, so the deployment is a very easy you can right click and you can say publish and when you publish uh, you can uh, pick uh, the different deployment slots available uh, I have I have picked the uh, development uh, deployment slot so as you can see here it will be deployed to marketingweb.dev and naturalwebsites.net so you can uh, change later if you want this to deploy to the staging uh, or, or QA as well so as you can see uh, over here uh, let me go to my uh, web app and go to uh, deployment slots and let me open up the uh, development deployment slot and let's browse that so as you can see it has a different version of the website so basically I have deployed my uh, latest release to dev first and you can test it and once the testing is done what you can do is you can easily swap this release to a uh, let's say QA right from dev to QA right and you can say swap it so all the configuration uh, and the content will be swapped will be uh, uh, moved to the uh, QA uh, deployment slot so you can give access to QA and, and get it validated so you can go through that life cycle over and over and again so let's go back to uh, this uh, reference architecture and discuss few other details uh, around the observability so as you can see uh, you can also introduce Azure log analytics and use Azure monitor service in order to monitor uh, the behavior and it will basically capture all the diagnostic logs and, and the metric data so you will be able to monitor the behavior of your front-end your database backend and your Azure keyword and all the all the data will be stored in the uh, workspace log analytics workspace uh, will be will be another topic for some other uh, video we can go in detail if required how to create a log analytics workspace and set up the metrics uh, how to register the source um, and once that is done you can use Azure monitor to monitor the uh, behavior of your application so as you can see this is a, a very good reference architecture where you can uh, use as the starting point for your next project if it is around a web application 
and you can keep on adding all the other additional services uh, depending on your use cases uh, so things like uh, public IP address uh, and, and a DNS entry so all those uh, things uh, are documented here uh, and also you can bring uh, any additional services as well uh, into the mix and uh, improve the uh, solution or take the solution to next level uh, depending on your business requirements so I hope this will uh, uh, help you to uh, understand the importance of this Azure uh, architecture uh, resource center and how to go through some of these reference architectures and uh, get the benefit uh, uh, get the best out of it so as you can see you can download the visual diagram for some of these architecture as well and modify depending on your need uh, and, and improve it uh, further by adding some uh, additional services to uh, this depending on your requirement um, thanks for watching this video and I hope to come back uh, and go through uh, one of the uh, other uh, use case uh, in future thank you so much